Hey, everybody, and welcome yes. to another episode of Deck and Around Community Corner. Today, we are really excited to have Tim on the show. You may know Tim from his YouTube channel, The Card Guy YT, where he reviews playing cards. You may also only know Tim by his hands and his voice. So this is a big reveal for Tim today. We get to finally see the face behind the hands. But before right. we jump into it, guys, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And ring that bell. So, Tim, how you doing today, man? Not bad, not bad. It's good to talk We're, to you. It's awesome to talk to you, too. We're actually super excited to have you on the show. You know, we always... Uh, we always talk to you in the community. I think you're a very active member of the playing card community, not only on the YouTube side, but obviously on Instagram, where I think a lot of the community also resides. So it's fun to finally get to put a face to the name and chat a little bit about playing cards with you today. Yeah, Heck good. yeah. Dude, yeah. he's a YouTuber. We're not supposed to have him on our channel. He's going to like take <laughs> views away from us and all that other stuff. I think this may technically be, we could call this our first like official collaboration. So there, there you go. go. Heck <laughs> yeah. There you go. We'll exactly. I mean, we did collab with, we did collab with Kier as well. Well, that was more him yeah. on the show, but it's fine. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Lots, this lots is the first, fun. this is the first collaboration. Let's just call yeah. it that. <laughs> <laughs> but so Tim, how did, well, first off, you know, how things going with you in general, how's quarantine and life within the COVID situation been treating you? It's uh, I'm, it's not bad. It's the same as everybody, right? I've been stuck at home, right? So this is my work setup too. So like, this is my office. Nice. This is where I stack all the cards. Like, this is it. Like, this room right here, that's where everything is. So, nice. It's not Very bad. Cool, it. Like, the first month, hated the whole thing. Just hated yeah. everything, but I eh, used to it. All right. That's not too bad, though. I mean, I think it definitely was an, an interesting position for everyone to transition into. But I feel like now, yeah, a lot of people have gotten comfortable with it. We've been in this situation for, what, about six months now? So it's yeah. the new norm. Yeah. It, yeah. It's been it's been a bit. And how have you found that it's impacted playing cards for you? Has it impacted playing cards? I think it's just giving it, – I don't, honestly, it's just giving me like two extra hours to go look for decks again. Like, which, is, <laughs> which is a plus and minus. I'm sure. buying more stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's really it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good. I always love seeing your name come through, come through my screen to see. Oh, what did Tim get? What did he want? <laughs> I know it's like every month. It's like eh, it's fine. <laughs> I think it's just. That. I mean, it's 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 cool seeing what people order, right? And you, you always see their styles, and oh, yeah. that's that that's the next review. <laughs> <laughs> that's too yeah. funny. That's and cool. I, yeah, and I think it's interesting too. You know, the idea of quarantine in general, I think has given people so much more time, you know, those two hours, like you said, you used to, uh, to buy new cards, but I think, you know, that's already because you're in a creative space. I think so many more people have stepped into this creative space because of everything going on, because they do have that extra time. And it's interesting to see how it maybe has impacted the playing card community in a positive way, bringing much more visibility to it or more members to the community and all that. So, yeah, it definitely seems like it's gotten a lot bigger. Like, I, I mean, a lot of that's like the Fontaines and things like that, that have just like exploded, but yeah, yeah, it's definitely gotten bigger in the last like six, eight months. Yeah, which right. is it's exciting though. You know, new names and new faces coming into the community always right. means that new people to meet, new cards to share with everybody. And you know, obviously with a with a YouTube channel reviewing cards, you enjoy the ability to share these cards with people. That's it. That's what yeah. it's all about. So, how did you get into the reviewing game? Honestly, so for me, I mean, I, you know, I started collecting cards, and like I'm, I've done like these collections before, right? I'll, I'll like start in a collection. And it's always bad, like you have disposable income and you get a collection. Like I was yeah. a kid, right, and you, you get like a deck of cards or a pack of baseball cards. Like, oh, this is a big deal. I have seen I'm gonna go get a pack of baseball. And now it's just like, you know, I think like, oh, let's get another break. Right. <laughs> I, I get into this thing and I've done this before, but after a while, like I started looking at a few of the different YouTube channels that were out there. And I know the one, the three that I look at the most, like everybody comes across like magic orthodoxy. Yeah, uh, he's out there. He does. He does great reviews. Uh, if you're looking for decks at all, you're going to come across like B. Jose, uh, like Jose, just because he's bought like every deck that's ever been made. He's just bought <laughs> right. So you're going to come across him and then uh, Gentleman Wake. And I'm looking at these reviews and I'm like, OK, there's like things that I like about all of them. Like I like how exhaustive Jose is, like that anytime you want to <laughs> see all the cards on his channel. But, you know, he didn't go into a whole lot of detail, right? He was just like, these are the cards, you know, here's a little bit about them, but that's it. You know, and then you look at guys like Magic Orthodox, you know, I'm, I'm picking these things that I like about them. 
And for me, it was like the cards that was always drawn to were these like big story decks, like the one yeah. mythology and all this. And so it was like, hey, look, there's nobody I felt like it was out there that was just like, talk about the inspiration, talk about the design, talk about the story in the deck. And so it's like, hey, I, I could do that. Like, that'd be a fun way to engage in the community. That'd be a fun way to get out there, do something a little bit different. Like, it wasn't money. It still isn't money. It better not be. Because um, that's not working out. Solely money. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, was, it was just like, hey, look, there's something there. This will be a fun way to just kind of share. Hopefully, some people get some value out of it. Maybe yeah. I can get somebody to buy some deck. But really, that was it. It was just like, hey, I'm looking at these others. And like, I think I can do something different. Cool. Right. You know, it's definitely a, a hobby where you spend a lot more than you could ever potentially make. So, yeah. Uh, and I think that's part of the fun of it, though, too. You know, there's so many different decks out there. Like, I, I mean, I think you even look at someone who is l late to the game by any standards, because I think a lot of people inevitably enter this hobby feeling like they missed out on so much. Like, you almost want to tell them, be like, listen, give it six months and you're going to see everything that comes out. And you're going to be like, wow, I'm glad I missed out on all that other stuff because otherwise I'd be broke right now. So yeah. it's a it's a crazy hobby like that. And uh, so how have you found, you know, within the community, like you said, you wanted to be able to give back to the community through your review channel. How has that kind of built your activity within the community, whether it be on Instagram or Facebook or even within YouTube itself? I, you know, I think... Uh it's it's been fun just to see like people's reactions like i love just scrolling scrolling through like comments on the videos and things like that and just seeing what and i mean i, I love it like invariably every, all the time like damn it i gotta buy another deck now like, <laughs> like, i love seeing that stuff and just like you can inspire somebody to like maybe look at a deck that they hadn't looked at or one that they kind of passed on before but like oh now i know a little bit more about it like that's a lot more interesting now and so for me, it's just kind of the back and forth on some of those things, uh, being able to show something a little bit different like that, just, it excites me every time that happens. And then on the flip side, right, I'll have other people, like I'll, I'll connect out with some of these other guys out there and just like see these crazy decks. I mean, you said like the stuff from like years ago or something. Yeah. Like, oh, that, that is a badass deck. Like I gotta go pick that one up. So it's just like that, that exchange of just, visibility into just how much is out there because like no one person other than jose can keep up with this stuff like, <laughs> yeah yeah it's kind of like what does he do for a job yeah now what what um what decks do you find yourself gravitating to is it more so decks that you could do a review on or is it just decks that you like that you decide to do reviews on or kind of yeah. I mean, when I think about review, like somebody, somebody described this to me the other day and it was like, when I watch your videos, I think I'm just watching somebody who is excited about the deck they're showing. And like, that's it for me. Right. So like, I don't do a lot, like you won't see me reviewing many of like the, you know, Fontaines or Orbits and things like that. Not that they're bad decks, but like, those aren't what excite me. Yeah. Right. Getting into like the design inspiration. A lot of it is like the story deck. So like, Third Way has been like a huge part just because he puts so much into the stories of every deck. Uh, King's Wild's a really big deal to me. He puts either, it's either stories or just like crazy weird inspirations like, you know, yeah. Beyond yeah. Deck and all this other stuff. So for me, it's just like anything where I can do something beyond just like, I'm looking at 52 nice pieces of art or I'm looking at a deck that is, is this is worth 50 bucks. Like right. it's like something with another level to it. That's really the main thing I'm looking for. That's cool. Yeah, that's really cool. So and I think, you know, one of the interesting things about the the YouTube side of it as well is because while you do build a community around it, it's always interesting to see like, I don't know, there, there's a community tab on YouTube. There's ability to kind of converse with people who watch it. But where do you find that you really find the most interaction? Like actual, not face to face, but, you know, actual back and forth interaction. Do you find that a lot of that translates for you to Instagram or is it on Facebook or is it really more... Like I said, you know, there's a lot of the, you like to read the comments, but I feel like that's always kind of a one-sided yeah. kind of thing there. Yeah, no, I think a lot more like the conversation is on Instagram. Like I've connected out with a few people where it's like exchange messages with them, but like on, on Instagram, the chat there, it's just, it's by far to me the best platform for this to be like collaborative. Like unless I start doing streams or something like live streams, which really just doesn't fit what I do. Really yeah. just Instagram is just a great way. Just cause I mean, it's just, like constant and you just you can just jump into the middle of like any conversation you want to i love that format the whole thing yeah right. yeah and have you found that uh 
Well, and so actually one of the things that we've been doing a lot recently is talking to people about the 52 plus Joker convention coming up. Have you found that, you know, are you familiar with 52? Have you kind of gotten involved in any or sort of like secondary clubs or anything like that around playing cards? I haven't really. And like, and honestly, like I know a little bit about 52 plus Joker a little bit, but like I haven't really connected in that side of things. And I, I feel like, Part of the reason is I'm afraid that's going to like just trigger another level for me. Like the minute I start going, like, well, I can't fly out somewhere every single year. Sorry, I'll see you later, honey. Like, <laughs> you're like I'm afraid to shoot. So a lot of this is like kind of tempering where I go with it. I'm sure like maybe two years from now, and like that's it. Like platinum sponsor, whatever convention you need, that's me. Like I'm in. But... <laughs> Did I get that? I think the, yeah, I mean the cool thing about it is this year you get to watch it all online. You know, so it being a virtual event, I think it'll be a lot easier to kind of dip your toes into it and see what yeah. it's about, see kind of how the conventions run. I mean, obviously, yeah. it'll be a little different than being in person, but you kind of get a good idea of, um, you know, the interaction that people are having and, and stuff like that. Yeah, no, definitely with the virtual, I plan on trying to kind of drop into a few things. I saw like Paul over at Jet Setter is just like filming his stuff already. So yeah, you'd be kind of yeah. cool. No, I think it's, it's interesting to see too, like just the, uh, I don't know. I think that's one of the things I love about the community. And I also like at the same time wonder how we're going to figure out how to bridge those gaps because the community does exist on so many different media platforms, you know, again, just talking about YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, but then you also have Reddit and you have people still are existing on forums and all these things like, and I feel like there's definitely people who don't jump between all of those. You know, I think Steve and I are on a handful of those, but there's probably some that we don't even know about. It's like, it'll be interesting to see one day if the community ever unites under a single platform or there's more adoption of multiple platforms and we actually finally get a feel for how big this community is as a whole. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think if it splits out, I think it's more like, just because like there's so many different parts of the community, right? The people that are collecting like all cardistry stuff, it's yeah. a very different world than like, you know, what I'm looking for or, you know, what, you know, you look at guys like Matt and Bayou, I think, you know, like, that's a totally different type of collecting and a different type of decks than, like, the currency world. I don't know, maybe that's the way it splits, but, yeah, it'd be cool to see, because, like, there are, yeah, those few, like, United Cards, another one, like, yeah, and, like, I'm just not nearly consistent enough going there. Like, I'll go there every three days, like, oh, there's, like, 47 new threads. I yeah. <laughs> I go there, like, every three months. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, unless you want to spend those extra two hours a day just catching up on UC, it's very tough to stay fully active there or on any platform without kind of yeah. sacrificing time on other platforms. Yeah, more important yeah. platforms. I gotta say, Steve, when you when you do your deck, which I'm excited to see that one. That one looks good. But when you do Thank that, you. you gotta put it up on UC just so that everybody can tell you what's wrong with it. Oh uh, no, for sure. Uh, it, it, you know what the funny thing is? Is so I I obviously I know that UC is known for that, right? Yeah. And when I posted it, dude, like hardly anybody commented on it. I'm like, I guess that's a good thing. Like the fact that I, I was really, I mean, I was kind of bummed at one point because I was like, wow, nobody commented on it. But I, like on another, you know, another side, I was like, I, I guess if nobody commented, that's a good thing. Right. I got, I think a, f a few comments, um, you know, that were great. I, uh, you know, I took their, uh, their advice and changed you know, uh, the cards and stuff like that, depending on what they said, because I didn't notice it. And I think putting it up there is good if the critiques are, you know, out of good intention rather yeah. than just trying to make someone, you know, feel bad. Um, but I definitely, uh, you know, took them into consideration and did change some, you know, some of them I didn't, you know, or a couple of them were really good. And I'm like, yeah, I didn't even notice that. Now I notice it and, you know, changed it and, uh, yeah, so I mean, I again, I was just surprised that there wasn't more oomph under my post. <laughs> yeah, I think if you put more of it out there, though, like because yeah. I mean, like, those guys love to just like nip. And I mean, that's just one of the things that I love about it because like they will analyze every part of it. Absolutely. Like, yeah, yeah. You made it like two millimeters wider. Oh, so much better. Yeah. Well, it, it, I, yeah. Good. I was just gonna say. I mean, the the cool thing about it is, uh, you know, I. Um, I think we all have different ideas. You know, I could put out a, uh, a thin border. You know, that's um, it's going to be a thin border back. You know, I, I don't like thick borders, so it's going to be a thin border. I guarantee that people don't, you know, there's a lot of people that don't like thin borders. Yeah. And they're going to be like, oh, that border looks like trash, blah, 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 you know? And, I mean, 
stuff like that, you just let it roll off. But other stuff, I think it's just great to get that feedback. And yes, I mean, I'm sure because once I stop posting all of them and stuff like that, you know, and I'll just add it to that current post if I can even find it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I will, uh, I'll definitely add to it and see what people say. And, you know, the, the cool thing is, is I've shown a lot of people, um, you know, like Tyler or, you know, or Matt, Matt has seen all my, the cards that are being worked on, you know, um, you know, so there, there's a bunch of people that have been kind of seeing the stuff. It's kind of like my edit team in a way, you know, it's like, oh, this looks kind of stupid. It looks like their arms 97 feet long you know, change it or whatever the case may be. You know, I also have, um, you know, someone who's pretty, pretty picky looking at the designs as well. So um, yeah. that feedback is always good and, and, and so much appreciated. You know, yeah. it, it definitely helps make our uh, work better, you know? Yeah. yeah. Exciting to see how it turns out though. Really exciting. Thank you. I, I'm excited to show you, man. Thank you. And I do hopefully, think- Hopefully you'll do a review on it. <laughs> And I think that's one of the things that actually really is kind of interesting to see how the different parts of the community and the different homes, we'll call them, where they do operate out of, have those different approaches. You know, you would never elicit feedback from an Instagram post, usually. You know, that's really not the place you go for it. Really, Reddit and you see where they're much more critical are the places you go for the honest feedback. And, yeah. and even Reddit's so honest. hit or miss. Yeah, honest. it's so hit or miss sometimes with Reddit because, like, the wrong person could see it first and downvote you and then no one sees the thing and you're just like, all right, well, oh, well. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, it's always interesting to see how the community operates like that. And I think yeah. for the most part, they're well-intentioned, so. Yeah. yeah, no, I think I think most people are. Is it, I mean, you know, you want to get that feedback though. I mean, that's, that's how you improve the thing, right? It's not just one guy slap. I mean, you get some of those guys, and, and you'll see like on different decks, right? You get some people that are just like, I'm putting this here to advertise. Yeah. They start getting feedback. Like, yep, I hear you're not doing anything about it. It's already printed. Yeah. Yeah. Why are you asking for feedback then? Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's like I, 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 one. I did, uh, you know, because I, I take photos of prototypes for, for people, you know, creating decks and stuff. And I'll notice things in some of these decks and, you know, I'll talk to Tyler about them and I'll point them out to the designer and they won't change it. Sometimes, you know, sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, what, I mean, what, it is what it is. And, you know. Well, you know, I think that's an interesting kind of uh, – that raises an interesting question because I think that's something in the community. Steve, designing a deck or in general, most people in the community have this idea that they always want to design a deck. Have you yeah. ever considered designing a deck, Tim, especially being so interested in the storytelling aspect of the creation? Yeah, I, I, I have. I have a couple, like, things that I would love to design a deck around. Like I, I, I have to find an artist because that's that's not me at all. <laughs> draw a damn thing. Yeah. So, but I mean, yeah, I I would love to. Like, there's a couple. Like, I, I don't know what he charges, but like, I know Jackson Robinson does like commission decks. If I got him to do a commission deck, he probably charges some just ridiculous amount. Would you know more power to him? He's got like 87 decks a year to design. So yeah, but, yeah. Like that. Yeah, I would love to at some point. Nice. And That's I think cool. it would be interesting to see too, because again, like you said, you know, being so interested in the decks with the story behind it, I'm sure it wouldn't just be like, here's my deck of cards. Check it out. Yeah. There's pictures on it. You know, I, I think <laughs> yeah, no, and, no, and that's, that's the hard part. Cause it's not like a, cause like the, the thing, like, you know, my other, one of the other things I love, being, I love barbecue. and I, around Texas, like barbecue is just a huge deal. And there's like these different pit masters that are just, legendary and they've been doing this for 40 years in the same spot that's so cool. I'd love to build a deck around that but i mean you know when that's I, cool I was like okay well i mean you know like you said right I, i'm into the story decks, right so okay well, we're going to customize every single court we're going to customize like heat if it's going to have a story behind it like we're going to do something like huge so yeah it's been like a small thing like hey can you just like sketch up a back design for me i mean there, there's got to be people like in the community that their artwork is based around pits and barbecue and stuff like that. And I think those are the people you want to reach out to and yeah. they'd be able to create it. You know, I think that's the key for a lot of, you know, creators, you know, is they have an idea in mind and they just reach out to people that can't create that type of art or, yeah, or that they type align of their style. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I have another deck that's in the works and uh, it's already like, 
it's already gone through two de two designers and it's still not found a designer yet you yeah. know so um and one of the designers the first designer is a super talented designer uh definitely up the alley of what i was looking for but um it just wasn't something i think that the designer could create yeah um you know and the same thing with the other designer you know it's you, you have to just make sure that the designer you're choosing is the type of designer that can create the type of deck that you want it's like a tattoo you're not going to go into you know uh you know someone who creates geometric tattoos and say will you do a watercolor tattoo for me you know it's just it's the same thing you know yeah yeah, no, exactly. yeah i got an analogy yeah, <laughs> that, com that comparison uh, yeah, yeah. tattoos everywhere yeah i know exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so and you know you mentioned uh you mentioned geo from third way you mentioned jackson as some of your favorite designers who what do you actually consider like your favorite actually let's let's do this as a two-part what's your favorite deck in your collection and then what's your like white whale all right so the white whale is literally the last third way deck i need that's an easy one okay Your signature anybody listening if you have that deck there's 50 of them out there like that is the one that i just can't find and it's driving me nuts <laughs> what, what, what is it which one is it three third delirium signature so okay is one of the delirium decks, but he did like fifty of them where he just like signed the top. Isn't it a white tuck or something? Yeah, it's it's like a it's it's not a, a prototype tuck. I mean, yeah, it's, it's kind of I don't I don't know if it's a prototype or what it is, but it has just a different tuck. He signed fifty of them. He did his part of the Kickstarter campaign, which was like years before I thought about doing this. And yeah. Yeah, that is that is the one. That's the white whale. That's the easy one. My favorite though. Okay. That right there. That is my favorite. Black monolith. Nice. Black Monolith is absolutely my favorite deck. Um, it kind of comes, well, I should say, it comes and goes, but Black Mono, Monolith and then the Tigers deck from King's Wild. Nice. Okay. Both, both completely visually, different. Yeah, completely different, but also completely both like awesome different. decks. That one, the, match, the matchbook one. Yeah. This yeah, one was cool. just unreal. But yeah, those are, the, those are the two, like, yeah, and just really different styles. And it kind of speaks to like the two things, right? Because Black Monolith, it was just like creating that entire story, right? Because if you look at the whole thing, it's like this mythology of mythologies and how like, hey, there's this one set of gods that have created every religion there's ever been, and here they are. It's like this really cool story, and then obviously like an amazing deck. And then the the Tigers one, it was like the series of inspirations that he pulled together. Like It was like, oh, well, I'm really into matchbook art, and then I'm looking at these old decks like from Russell and Morgan back in the 1800s, and I've mashed those together and made the perfect deck. That's so like, cool. Yeah. Like, the, like those two just sort of exemplify for me, like those are the things that excite me about decks. When people put yeah. that amount of thought and work into them. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think of uh, Lotrek? Is he, if uh, you dig his decks or? <laughs> I, I started to, and I'm like dipping my toe in the water because I, I, and there's another one is like, I got to be careful. Got to be careful. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you definitely one. have to be careful with it. Otherwise, um, it's going to hurt your pocket. But I, so I was just I, thinking you like stories, and he's like yeah, uh, a storyteller without words, right? Yeah. And so, like, I've got a handful. I've got a handful of them at this point. But for me, it's just like I, I like, I had to draw the line somewhere. So <laughs> you, but I, I was like, honestly, like, I've started to, like, I got from you just the other day. I got the less deck. Right, so oh, I just right. need to pick up a little bit here and there. So yeah, well, should start, with, start yeah. with last and then build yourself up. <laughs> and, and well, no, and like I know I'm in trouble now because I I've started looking at crypt. I'm like, well, maybe I'll just like put an alert for that if any of those come up for sale. Maybe I'll maybe I'll grab a crypt. Yeah, I know so, someone who's selling one pretty cheap. <laughs> I saw okay. it. Who was? Talk to me after. Talk to me after. <laughs> yeah, someone's selling one cheap. But, uh, yeah, you're. <laughs> That's dangerous there. Yeah. It is. And it, it is and it is a slippery slope, especially when you get to some of these uh more well known designers within the collector community. Cause I think, you know, it, it transcends the the idea of hey, this is a worker's deck or anything like that, or something a cardist would use, and it becomes yeah. a piece of art, truly. And art commands high prices. <laughs> yeah. And that like yeah. I mean, with all of them, like that's how it's been. Like Jackson Robinson, I can't keep up. But like I started third way and was like, okay, I gotta get all of them. And so I mean that was the trouble, right? You hit some of those like crazy ones that are just like, you know, over a hundred bucks for a deck and like, you know, that those got nuts. Yeah. And now it's like Uzi is the one that I'm trying to like get all the Uzi decks, which is another one that's yeah, yeah. that's a tough one too. Yeah. Those are some yeah. tough. 
Yeah. Uh, and there, there's are surprisingly hard to find through mainstream channels sometimes as well, which is always like yeah. a shocker to me. Like, I mean, for me, like my go-to, if I'm really looking for a deck, the first place I always look not only for price point, but availability is just eBay. It's not yeah. the best place. It's not usually the place I'll go to buy, but yeah. to see how common they are. And sometimes you can't even find all their decks on eBay. And I'm just like, damn, yeah. all right. Surprising. Yeah, I mean, it's weird. Cause I, and I don't even know what it is, right? Cause they're not that rare. Like most of them are like, or they're not that low print run. Right? Yeah. Like they're two, three thousand deck runs. So you'd think like, oh yeah, there's gonna be there's gotta be like fifty of them floating around. But yeah. Like there's three. Yeah, and I, I mean think that, that sorry. Yeah, Steve. That that's it, it's interesting because there's certain decks that just don't go up for resale, right? Yeah. It's it's kind of like the Tacoma <laughs> of of the cards, you know? Like everybody knows that Tacomas are dope, you know, they're not rare. But nobody puts them up because they're just a great deck, you know. And it's kind of like there's certain decks out there that you won't see very often, just because people keep them. Yeah. You know, they're they're not looking to sell them because you know you're never gonna find a blue damask, you know, from low track because everybody keeps them. And when they're yeah. ready, if because they're running out of funds, then yeah, they're gonna they're gonna sell it, you know. But what it comes down to is like there's always those decks that people do keep because UC doesn't come out with decks very often. You know, so they're not sat oversaturating the market. They're not, um, you know, creating decks all the time. So people really like them. They're done very well, and they look great. And yeah. people want to hold on to them for that reason. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. No, no, absolutely. And I think, uh, you know, what it's good that, that you're taking it slowly, like you said, from a designer approach, even as well. Like, all right, I like this designer. Let me see what they have. I'll go pick it up because then it does allow you to not get sidetracked so easily. I think people first stepping into the hobby, they're always like, this deck looks great, that deck looks great, let me back everything. And all of a sudden you have a hundred decks on Kickstarter backed in your first three months and you're like, oh my God, I now guilty. I live in, I live in my guilty. car now. Yeah. I, I think you assume I'm taking it slowly because that story about low track. You're, you're not. <laughs> no, but first I mean, of all, look at, look, look at behind Tyler. Look at behind him. Do you think he's taking it slowly either? No, look behind Tyler. Look yeah. behind Tyler. That's only some. That's only some. Yeah, but. exactly. <laughs> what are you What are you up to at this point? Uh, oh, geez, I stopped counting. To be honest, I don't even know. I uh, that's the weird thing about it. Like I like to collect, but at the same time, I don't care how many. Like I don't I don't keep track of it to that extent. Um, I'm probably close to four fifty somewhere around there. <laughs> that's totally like. Here's the thing. It that's a ballpark. And, I, I literally, and it's because Tyler's relatively, I mean, he's newer than me, about four months, five months or so. Um, and, yeah, I started collecting in like December last year. Yeah, and I started in like August Yeah. Um, of last year. Actually, probably uh, probably May, May or June, actually. I started the shop in August, but so about May or June. And, and basically, I did that. I got into it and I was like, oh, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. And, you know, $10 added up. Ten dollars added up, ten dollars added up, and then fifteen, ten, ten, and then eventually you know you're like, holy crap! I just went through three, four, five grand. Yeah, and I have six hundred decks, and I'm, I'm like, what the f? And you know, eventually, you know, I got to the point where I'm like, okay, you know what? This deck's cool, but I don't like it as much as I did when I bought it, so I got rid of it. You know, and you know, obviously, I scaled down the collection, and I think, you know, just between, you know since Tyler and I have been doing the show or whatever, I think he's kind of slowed down a bit where he, you know, he used to be like, okay, I'm going to grab three of these. I'd be like, dude, you need three? Just grab yeah. one. Like, <laughs> yeah, right, I'm going to grab one. So I think he's changed that momentum a little bit because he's realized it can hurt real quick if you keep that up, you know? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, haven't, I haven't hit that point yet. I do have a bunch of, I do have a bunch of just like the junk in my I don't call it junk. I hate saying that. About <laughs> I hate saying that because, like, I think look, people put work into their decks. But for me, right, in my collection, like, not everybody, <laughs> this stuff doesn't fit at all in what I have. But it was like early on, right? Because like one of the things when I started is like I was, you know, like everything you see a bunch of these cardistry videos, like cardistry decks. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Like, <laughs> now, like, I have you know forty cardistry decks that like. I, I don't have anything to do with these. Like I you know, I look at them like, yeah, okay, that one's there. Right. So yeah, out of that, like, yeah, there's probably a hundred decks that I could just like I could lose them today and that would Yeah, it'd be no big deal. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's the thing about it too, I think, is you know, 
because this is such a collector oriented hobby, you do kind of need to figure out your taste. And the best way to figure out your taste is to buy a bunch of stuff and see what you like the most and go from there. And I think there's so many bright flashing, you know, Kickstarter campaigns out there where you're like, this is the best deck ever. I love this. And you get it and you're like, oh, this, you know, by the time you get it in the mail, you've bought 30 other decks that you're like, wow, this is phenomenal. And if you do come across, you know, a Jackson Robinson or a Low Trek or a Geo or a Stockholm 17, before you start landing some of those Kickstarter decks, they ruin some of those decks for you. You get them and you're like, yeah. man, like why did I back this three months ago? So, yeah, so I think the best thing about Kickstarter is the 30 days they run that thing. It's just like you have that minute of like when it first launches, like, oh, in early birds, like this is amazing. I can yeah. jump on this. And then, you know, you look at it 20 days later, like, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I don't know if this meets the criteria anymore. Well, I mean, you know, it was funny too because, like Steve mentioned, you know, picking up multiple of a deck at the time, it was like, all right, like I'm gonna keep one to keep sealed, and then one I'm gonna open and look at. And now I'm just like, all right, to get to the quality, to get to the threshold now of keeping one sealed because I feel like I forever want it. It'll be a collector's item. Is a much higher threshold now than it was six months ago. You know? Yeah. You open all your decks then? So for the most part, so I'll say I open all my decks, but I haven't gotten around to opening all of yeah. my decks yet. So yeah. like there's still stuff that's like coming. Well, no, and again, like you know, perfect example. I got the metal arts this morning, but I was on the way out the door. So like I haven't opened it yet, but I'll probably open that this afternoon. There's probably a handful of decks that I've picked up over the past couple of weeks that I put in my drawer. They're gonna get opened at some point. I'll take a picture of them at some point, but like I haven't opened it yet because it isn't like one of, it's a deck I like, but not necessarily a deck that like, oh man, I have to check. It wasn't a crypt or a new geo deck or anything like that. You know, like when apocalypse shows up, you better believe I'm going to open that within the first couple minutes of getting it. Like those decks, they command a little more uh, urgency in opening because you want to see if it's as amazing as you expected it to be. But like a cool bicycle deck, I can wait a couple of days to open, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm trying to be the like open every deck that you possibly get, right? Yeah. Now, there's there's like a small handful. Like I cannot like I got the um the Omnia Suprema, which was like it's like Geo's most expensive deck. I'm, like yeah, I cannot bring myself to open that one. <laughs> like I started to and I grabbed a little tab. I'm like that, I can't do it. Can't do it. So yeah. I, <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to be able to bring myself to open. But that's like like ten out of seven hundred or something like that, right? So this is, uh, right. Yeah, That's it's a fun. very it's a very small number. I literally I think the only two I have right now that I wouldn't open are a uh, Theory Eleven propaganda deck and that bicycle eight oh eight uh espionage deck in foil. And the only reason I won't open the espionage one is because I can't find a second so I can open this one. Like that would be <laughs> one that I'd want a second of because it's a really cool deck and like you don't see the foil version very often. So yeah. you know you know the cool thing about so I obviously I'm on two different scales of collecting i have my low track i have my you know my my decks that are you know i shouldn't open you know not shouldn't but you know um like stockholm 17s um you know room 17 or something like that you know um which i can't they're not ex too too expensive where i can't uh you know get another one and you know open one and have one closed but my biggest pride and joy of collecting is my pandrea set so I have like all the Pantrea sets, but the cool thing is, is I could buy five to open because they're so cheap, you know, <laughs> but, yeah. but I also have all of them sealed because I think it just looks cool sealed, you know, yeah. um, they're not worth Jack, but you know what? Mm -hmm. I really, really dig them. I can literally put them to the test and I don't have to worry about it. You know, where probably the most difficult one to find is 30 bucks. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, uh, that's the cool thing about just having the two different, you know, I have my low track and I have my, my knocks that are, yeah. are sealed, you know, which. Is, yeah. I don't know. I admire those guys that can open up just like literally anything. Like that's what I love about like, I'll go to the one live I will never miss is if I see Matt's up there, like I got to go into that, yeah. anything. It's like, he's just ripping open rare. Did you watch, did you watch the show on Thursday? No, I didn't see it. Oh my God, so funny. This, I'm gonna like literally like laugh about this. So not many people know, you know, certain people don't know what uh, low trek decks look like or what they are. Or they have no idea. So we, we do this, you know, the sniff for stew uh, each episode. So we did it, <laughs> we did it this week 
And um, Kevin Ho was opening up a, a first V2. Okay. And I opened up my, my red damask and sniffed it. <laughs> <laughs> and no, everybody in the chat was like, oh, v first V2. And I'm like, you guys not know what this is? <laughs> Here I am opening up like, you know. Steve was playing to the wrong audience that day. I really was. It was because in my head, I'm like, this is the funniest thing. I'm <laughs> laughing to myself. And I'm literally, Tyler knows exactly why I was laughing. Yeah. Nobody knew exactly what I was sniffing. And I'm like opening it and I'm showing. And Tyler's like, don't be flexing. Don't show off. And nobody even knew what I was doing. And I'm like, mm, it, cut, it smells pretty good. Yeah, it was just so funny because nobody knew what I was opening. <laughs> uh, it's it's weird how different the community is. And I think it's one of the great things about cars. Like you, can, you can have like so much different art and appreciate yeah. on so many different levels. Like, there are people that just like, they think some of the decks I look at are like the ugliest decks in the world. Like that's okay. Right. right? Yeah. And I, you know, I, I don't care for Fontaine's. Like that's all right too. And like that, like just the different levels and just how much variety you can get in how you can like express art on cards is just that amazing to me. It really is. Yeah. Now what um what do you what do you think is your favorite deck in your collection other than um like what's your favorite kind of everyday deck, let's say, like not collector deck, not like one that you'd like, you know, one that you could literally take out of the box, play with, yeah, and, you know, and look at every day, not and not feel about bad it. about, yeah, yeah, not, look, not worry about its value. I it's probably jet setters. Jet setters nice. has got to be like awesome. I look at because like most of what I get are these like really highly customized decks. Yeah, yeah. there you go. And this is like there's there's two that are just like plain decks that I'll always get. Ace Fultons, although I still consider those are like more collectors type, right? They just they go for they I don't know, collectors, but they end up being like thirty dollar decks or something like yeah. that. Yeah, and then more. Yeah, people. not the new ones, but yeah, the older ones are. Yeah, yeah or, sure. or we get some of the older ones are like 50, 60, 70 bucks or something like that. But like those and jet setters are the two just like plain decks that I'll always get. Nice. Yeah, and like honestly, like it wasn't like it, it's just like such a clean look to the whole thing. It's so well executed. You can use it. Jet setters, the one I love is like the tuck case. Like you don't even have to feel bad about that thing. Like you can't tear that thing apart if you try. Like we literally just talked about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we literally we were talking literally to Paul just about, talking that. about that. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking to Paul about that. And he's like, Yeah, like it makes perfect sense because when you're traveling with a deck of cards, like your tuck is gonna get torn. Like that's why I have tear resistant tucks, and that's why it makes sense for the brand. It was yeah. perfect, yeah, perfect timing. But yeah, it, hey, is that the I saw you posting on your I didn't know if that was yours or Paul's picture. Is that the gilded one? Which, oh, oh, look at that. Yeah. Steve is. Uh, uh, I saw him mention that he that he had made a few of them or something like that, that he was going to try them. Very they are good looking. They are good looking. And it's funny, though, because, like, I still think at the end of the day, like, we're – it's such a great deck. Like, Paul does such a great job keeping it as, like, a perfect deck for your pocket to travel with, you know? Yeah, yeah. he does. Yeah, it no, is. Like, I, I, like, keeping with – brand and just like hey he's building a brand he's building something around this whole thing right and it's not about growing this into like hey how can i you know how can i hype this thing up or anything like that like no there's a mission this brand is what this is it's going to appeal to who it appeals to like i have a lot of respect for that yeah, yeah. he's a very smart guy you know um and he's a super rad dude yeah yeah so i, I like seeing like super cool guy like super cool people you know, create super cool brands that do really well, you know? Yeah. So yeah, yeah a lot of, a lot of respect for what he did, but yeah, that is, that's like the one, just like the everyday deck that for me. That's cool. What, what's your favorite color that he's done? Uh, I like the restricted red. The restricted nice. red. And, and I'm a sucker for like, I'm maroon. So this is a &M. That's like, so I'm a sucker for anything maroon, red. That's always going to be my good. Gotcha. Gotcha. Which, which is funny. Cause I know if I ask Steve, he likes blue, like blue's his jam. Yeah. It's I funny because when I posted the picture, like when I posted the Jack of Hearts of the Visions, people are like, oh, I love that color. I'm like, yeah, sorry, it's not going to be red. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. That's been our conversation across all of Steve's deck because I'm like, dude, I really dig that red or I really dig that color. He's like, no, nah, that's changing. And I'm like, what, what are you showing me here? What am I supposed to focus on? I'm like, I like the axe in his hand. Like, okay. <laughs> Look at everything but the color. 
<laughs> it's like the hardest it's like the hardest thing to do you're like all right well like let me yeah. just block that out that's uh, that's literally the hottest thing to choose on the deck literally i'm is sure figuring out the color and yeah it's it's not easy you know and that's but it's hard it's hard to judge a deck without like and ignore the color right because that's yeah. so much of like it brings out the feel of the whole deck absolutely yeah it's tough man it's it's tough and depend it depends on how you're gonna print it and and what yeah what you're trying to bring across you know and uh depending on who's printing it you know do they print these colors better or what well, there's just so much involved and i think through the whole process and i mean even alex pandre was talking about it the hottest thing i mean he does nox the hottest thing for him to do is to choose a cool color yeah. because yes ultimately he could just go through the color wheel and be like all right i'll just do this one this time but yeah. it, it's so much more than that you can you know pick two colors that look great together but what it comes down to is does it look great together on that deck yeah, yeah. i know yeah. one of uh, uh brad fulton in like an interview somewhere he said he was they asked him like about his decks he's like look the hardest thing to do is to make a simple deck yeah and it's so because like you look at you look at the fulton's decks and like they're just so well thought out all the detail how it's laid out and, like it's a simple deck right it's just yeah. repeated on there but like, yeah, it just it reminded like uh, they say like in chefs, like the, the hardest thing in like the test of a chef is like how you can make an egg. And it's just like, you know, the simplest things, like that's where you can really see where your artistry comes through, like how it is you can combine these things. Because yeah, it's a hard thing, right? Getting the right colors and getting that right feel. Like it's not as simple as it seems. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 yeah that's true. So Wow, I definitely had a question there and it just left my mind completely. <laughs> but... <laughs> I object. <laughs> <laughs> so no and i and no, i think it's a good point about the simplicity of it being difficult because really oh actually this perfect that reminds me now so one of the things i'm sure you've seen you know i think steve and i have talked about this in general whether it be you know on air or off air is trending in colors and i think it's always kind of a running joke within the collector side of things where it's like oh well here's the ninth pink deck for 2020 you know yeah. Do you, you know having been in it longer than steve and i you know do you see color trends usually follow like you know if, if teal's a hot color this year the next five decks are teal and things like that uh no what do you, what do you like yeah i mean definitely the colors like yeah i mean pink was a big thing i think teal like i think you're gonna just see a ton of teal decks yeah and i and i think it's a it, it's a hard thing because like i'll see some of the guys like i remember uh paul was talking about the teal jet setters deck which he had picked the color a long time ago and then all of a sudden like right before he announces the deck he's like well, there's all these like teal decks coming out. Like, I didn't want people to think he was kind of following the trend. I think it, it, yeah. it's a hard thing because a lot of these creators, like, they don't want to be seen as following the trend, but right. it's hard not to like let that creep into your design, let that become a part of it, right? It like, yeah, so much of the decks are going to build off of each other and are going to work off of a lot of common themes. There aren't a lot of guys that are really starting with like blank canvas every yeah. time they create. Right, they're just really aren't. I mean, even guys like, you know, even guys like Giovanni, who I love, like he has this like backlog of stuff that he's building upon, and he's building a new story with the same parts. But there's really like, yeah, you're gonna build on what you see, and so yeah, there's gonna be a lot of commonalities for sure. Well, I think you know it's interesting too because if you do see a good color trending, like that's free market research for you right there. People seem to enjoy this color, and if it works well with your your design, like. Why not utilize something that you've already seen functioning and working yeah. and getting good feedback? You know, granted, you don't want to then sit there and be like, oh, every deck for this year is going to be magenta. That would, yeah. that would be a brutal year. But, you know, something along those lines, like if it fits. And I think that's the other thing with color, though, too. And, you know, like Steve said, and like we've said here, picking out the color isn't just about, you know, what looks good visually, but it has to work well with the overall aesthetics of the deck, the talk, everything like you wouldn't expect to open a maroon tuck and pull out lime green cards. Yeah. You know, those, I mean, maybe you would, I don't it's know. Like it's like fashion. It's <laughs> literally like fashion. Yeah. If something's fashion and in, like it doesn't matter what community you're in, it's gonna like roll over into the community as a whole. You know, if, if someone really likes purple, you know, and another company creates purple, people are like, oh my God, I love purple. Like companies are just gonna stop printing purple. That's just how it is. You know, that's yeah. why, a lot of companies, you know, during the summer will do like summer colors. You know, you have your orange, you have your yellow, you have, you know, things like that. And, and that's just 
how it's going to work, you know? So yeah, we can have people claiming, oh, they're copying and, and following the trend, but that's the smart thing, right? You know, yeah. without a doubt. Yeah. No, sure. I mean, you're trying to sell a thing at the end of the day. I mean, you know, this is not a thing where like people aren't doing this as a charity, right? It's, and not right. Even, like, well, I can just print whatever I want. People are going to buy whatever it is. Yeah. You, know, you got it. You have to understand what's going to sell, what's going to appeal to people. Yeah. It's just part of it for sure. Yeah. Well, so, the one thing we do know is that when Tim comes out with his deck, it's going to be red or maroon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's going to be in the red color wheel. I think the one the one that bugs me, and like this is the other part of being A and M, is our rivals at Texas. Like orange just drives me nuts, and so now like there's been like the orange, orange decks, and I just I can't stand it. I like, so, I am totally with you, bro. Literally, the deck that I was create the deck that I'm creating, uh, the first designer I was working with did it in orange, and I'm like, nope. Take the orange out. <laughs> I can't do the orange. Remove it. Yeah. I don't want the. I don't want. I don't want a Halloween deck. If someone looks at it and they're like, "Oh, it's orange. It's Halloween." I'm. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. No. So yeah, orange is the one color that is just triggers me. Triggers. I think yeah. everyone has that color though, where it really like they're just not a fan of it, and it's interesting to see what it is because ultimately that can make a big decision with it. You know, I mean. Yeah. I like I know Steve likes blue, I like blue, you like marine maroon. I'm sure there's other colors that like really can throw you off on that front. Um so that yeah. being said though too, and I have a question for you that I won't have you specifically shout anything out, but being a reviewer, going through a lot of the decks that you do and really focusing on decks with a story, have you ever come across a deck where you're just like, ah, this deck is terrible? <laughs> And again, don't have to that name never names. Happens, Tyler. What are you talking about? <laughs> you don't have to name names, but like, I'm always curious to hear. Yeah. So, and I'm going to try to do this without calling out specifically because somebody, somebody told me once. Uh, I, you know, I had a couple people comment like, "Hey, you always seem to like like the decks." Like, well, yeah, I like most of the decks I review because that's what I buy, right? I'm not yeah. like I don't have creators that are just like sending me shit to review, right? This yeah. is, like, I'm putting out the things that I like, so I'm not going to waste a lot of time doing the decks I don't like. But I think. Right. There are a few decks out there that like started with this concept, and and there's one that uh, focused on like Arthurian legends, and I won't get into like the name of the deck, but they focused on Arthurian legends. Like, okay, there is so much to like about that, right? There's so much depth and story there. I'm looking like this is going to be amazing, and then you see the deck, and it's like it has all these cores, and like, and this is Merlin, and this is you know Lancelot, and these are all these characters. And they all look the same. Like I have no idea. <laughs> you know, that's just generic night one and generic night two and generic night three. Yeah. Like, that kind of thing just drove me nuts. So I think, you know, if you're, you know, it's it's a hard thing to go into those story decks and say you're inspired by legend. But if you're gonna be, if you're gonna say I'm inspired by something like that, like go the extra mile and pull the inspiration, right? Don't just put people on there, slap names on it, and be done. Like you don't have to go that route and make a deck. Yeah, right. where the routes to go, but like I think those are the, there, there's been a couple of decks like that that just put that label on there because they wanted to appeal to that collector and then just didn't put in the work and just right. like, like why like why are you gonna bother like why bother at that point? Agreed, hundred percent agree. And I did I did do I did do a couple of reviews and I've been, I'm gonna, I'm trying to throw in a couple of reviews like the decks that disappointed me and I feel bad like I say it's one of those things like I don't want to knock a creator. But I also don't want to give the impression like, oh, I'm just putting the decks I love. So, you know, talking about the things that I don't like about different decks, I think is yeah. something that I'm working on. Like, I don't want to be that guy who's going to, like, just tear your deck to shreds. So for the moment, <laughs> right, right. I skip them on the channel, right? If I just genuinely hate the deck, you just, you'll never see it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that, for the most part, we do the same thing. I mean, if uh, we're, we're a little more uh, – we're, we're not – we try and be as objective as possible. We're not a reviewer <laughs> either. Like we, we don't want to be considered a review channel or, um, you know, ours is more, like you said, you, you kind of picked apart what you didn't see and what you liked about something and you did that. And, and you know, we kind of uh, did the same thing. You know, we don't, um, you know, dive super in depth on the stuff. We just talk about the things that we think we would care about and, it's kind of quick, quick, quick and easy, and uh, just give you a little more information that you might not see with someone else. But what it comes down to is we don't want to like bash someone's style either. The best thing you know that we say is, is it's just not our style. You know, yeah. that's that's kind of the diplomatic way to saying if you don't like it, or you know, it's not 
you don't have to say it's trash you don't have you know and again if it's trash we're not going to review it either because what's the point <laughs> you know what i mean but we have you know, started to get called out though on the fact that people are like you always say it's not your style what is your style and i'm just like Oof, that's a complex question there <laughs> So well, what do you, what is your I know I know Steve's all into like the low trek decks and the Nox. What is, what's your what's your main style then? So I like visually appealing fans to be very honest. Anything that just looks really good fan. I it's what I kind of No, no. And so here like honestly like I'll pull out like I actually and I'll tell you right now my favorite deck is the Bacopo Gorgeous deck, which I'm not going to be able to get this to focus but there we go. But like this deck, I love it. It's simple. It's a bicycle deck, but it's just <laughs> Fans beautifully, yeah. That's not my favorite deck. That uh, <laughs> that guy there, I could pass on, or even something like the uh, the dude. Lux the Lux Mandala. Oh, the Lux. Awesome, yeah. They, I like dude. the visually appealing decks. I think when the art and the color oh, really come one. together and really look good, like that's what I'm about. So I am kind of agnostic style wise, but it's really about the visual appeal. So like I have. I, don't know, I just picked up false anchors. I have Lotrex crypt. I'm all over the place with those things because like I do like things that really stand out. But by, at the same time, because I'm, I'd say my categories are a little bit more broad with what I collect. I am much more picky about what I will pick up. Like I'm not right. just going to pick up something because it's similar to something else I'd like, unless I know it's really going to hit home. Well, yeah. Yeah. You can out. never go wrong with monarchs. I'm a big fan of monarchs all day long. I think monarchs are like the happy medium for me. I, it's weird because like, and like I don't hate monarchs, but like that's one of those decks. Like it's just, I get it, but I, like I get it significant in the community, but it's never been one that like. Well, like, and the yeah. the well, collector price point that gets driven behind it always blows my mind. Oh, for like the the rare ones. Yeah. Yeah. Stupid. I mean, yeah, I don't get it either. I got a lot of commentary like when I did, I did my like top theory eleven decks. And of course, I went with ones that were like, oh, yeah, I want the full custom quartz and all this stuff, right? So that's what I was looking for. But I got so many, like, Monarchs didn't even make it. Where a Monarch? Where a Monarch? <laughs> I'm not surprised by that. People do, like, they have, uh, it's crazy. Like, I feel. Yeah, I mean, I, I, feel like I think it's, it's, yeah, I think it's more, it's a magician's deck. Yeah. You know, and I think the collector side of it comes in when you have those limited edition ones. And, you yeah. know, it, it, for the most part, it's a magician's deck. That's why it, the courts are standard courts, and yeah. you know that that's why it was created. And I think it's just a very elegant back design that just really appeals. I think um, you know to magicians, but yeah. oh no, no, it's a nice deck. Like I get it. It's just like it's never yeah. been top of my list. Like so, yeah, like, in my top yeah. eleven, like I'm gonna go pick you know Tavern on the Green or one of those. But, yeah, yeah. right. For Something sure. yeah, with a little more style to it. Yeah, I think the list that Monarch should always fall on is like, what's your top everyday carry? Yeah, yeah. For it's sure. a simple, relatively easy to find deck. I mean, you can literally find the green monarchs on Amazon all day long for everyday carry for like six dollars. Yeah, yeah. So half a retail price, and it comes dinged from Amazon. You don't care because it's going in your pocket anyway. So, yeah. like from that point of view, yeah, like it's definitely an everyday carry deck. But yeah, if you're really going from a stylistic point of view, yeah, you ever yeah. sit back and feel like how far you came in this thing? Because like I would like when I started, it was like it was walking around Target, right? And I, I passed by the mark, like. Who the fuck is gonna spend ten dollars on this? <laughs> wrong with people? And I'm I, and I pass by and finally, like, all right, I got to I got to I got to see one. I, picked, I think it was Citizen was the one I picked up at the time, and like that was what I just, like fell into the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, like, I'm, you know, now I'm looking at a crypt. Like, I don't I don't know where I, I don't know where this all came. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it'll change your life. The crypt deck will change your life. It is an amazing deck. It it'll beautiful. Have you deck. seen it yet? I I've seen little hints of it. Yeah, I've seen okay, I've seen it, I've seen a couple of it, cards. It'll, it'll change your life. It is beautiful. It, it, that thing in person, like that man, he is the goat. Nobody can touch him with what he does. He literally is the goat at designing and printing playing cards. For yeah, sure. I think the level. Like, yeah. yeah, the level yeah. Uh, the level of technical understanding he has of the printing process and how to make that function as a playing card. Is phenomenal, mind blowing. Yeah. You know, yeah. you think of a, a fully foiled deck that can't have cushioning in it because you don't want to emboss it and mess up the foil. That's a problem. Low track will solve it for you. Yeah, yeah. I'll just create the cushioning out of foil. <laughs> like Great. there are artists that I like more, but I or you know I think like hey I like this art better or whatever. But yeah, 
the total process of creating cards. Yeah. yeah, there's no use like just encapsulated the whole thing the way he has. Yeah, yeah no, yeah, it's it's sure. impressive. But so Tim, before we kind of wrap things here today, um, why don't you give a quick rundown of all your social media where people should check you out? We're also yes. going to link to it all in the description below. So for anyone who's, you know, misses it or whatever, we'll see it down there. But kind of why don't you give a quick synopsis of why someone should check out your channel? Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, they talk a lot about it here, but uh, come find me on YouTube. Uh, the card guy over there, I will review pretty much any deck that I like. So let me know what you want to see out there. Uh, find me on there. The card guy, there's another card guy. Don't look for that guy. He's a jerk. Terrible guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can find me on Instagram at the card guy YT. Uh, so nice. Also yeah. It, and Tim does phenomenal reviews. He does phenomenal posts and just an all around fun guy to talk to. So feel free to reach out to him on Instagram. Uh, I know Tim, we've kind of flowed in some similar circles. So again, it's nice to be able to finally put a face to the name and the discussions we've had in the past. So yeah, no, it's, you guys, like, this, this is weird. Like I, I was thinking like, nobody has actually seen my face. Like surely somebody <laughs> As well, yeah, you're not you're not a mystery anymore, buddy. I hate to break it to you. <laughs> that's what we're we're now like. Yeah, yeah. we're we're myth busters for people who are hiding their faces. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's our yeah. new role in the community. So, well, thank you yeah. so much, Tim. We really do appreciate you coming on, man. For anyone watching, thank you so much for checking this out. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. See y'all later.